Hey there, internet. So today I'm here with my friend, Botic. Botic. We got Bye. Mike Paul. and Greg, Greg, and we're going to be talking about 180 VR. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> this is the Zcam K1. It's super nice. 3K per eye and two 20 degree lenses on each one of the uh, each one of the eyes. They're back my micro four thirds sensor. Very well aperture. So what you can do is you need to make sure that okay, the first thing is when you get this out. Uh, the setup that we have is that just check that you got the SD cards in there, mm -hmm. make sure they're the same size. And then what I like to do at the start of the shoot is just check that the aperture value is set to the same for both. There's, there's a little knob there, so you can just adjust it like there you that. Go. So, so this little knob allows you to adjust it. And you gotta make sure yep. they're the same. Because if they're not the same, you're gonna be looking kinda one yeah, I got some weird, yeah. Purpose. The setup that we have here uh, for this particular configuration is based on the guide that Eric Cheng over at Facebook wrote, so the peak quality VR 180, super great. Give Definitely him a shout out. Through. Absolutely. Adobe Definitely. shout out Facebook here. Why not? So once we've got the camera out, I just tend to leave the lens caps on until we're done. In fact, when I'm transporting this around, I'll leave this on. You know, the other recommendation that we got was this uh, extra rig and setup from yep. Nick Mechanic, yep. uh, which is an external battery mount. The other thing that you'll need is that if you're shooting uh, on a tripod, you're definitely going to need an offset plate yep. just to get you past the edge of the tripod feet. Okay. So I, I don't move that until uh, later. And ideally, you want to you want to make sure this has got a level on it. Yeah. If you don't, you'll need to like strap one on. Yeah. But I, I'm just using this as a demonstrator, right? What you want to do is is that you want to get past the tripod feet. Here's why. Looking, this this these are a pair of 220 degree lenses. If you look side on, you can actually see that the entrance to the lens is a little bit further out from the body. Yeah. So you know you can see a long way around, and it gets cropped back to 180. But even with a 180 crop, you can see straight down. Yeah. And your good quality stereo region is going to be about four to five feet from the camera, mm. and uh, four to five feet from the camera, and then looking straight up and down. Everything straight up and down. So you need so an offset plate to put it further away from the tripod. Correct. Right. right. So so you need to make sure that the feet are not directly underneath it. You do yeah. not want these feet in the shot. Yeah. We can get, that makes I mean, you, sense. you can get rid of them in post, but you know, So this is like a wow, special tool you'd only really need for 180 one. almost. Pretty much. Right. Very I mean, like, that's the thing. Like, with, with, with 180 style shooting, this is a necessity. Yeah. Right? So as far as the rest goes then, okay, so, you know, batteries are fairly standard. They're just yeah. like Sony batteries. So we just slot that in. Oh, uh, and you have the adapter <laughs> on the top, so it's like one less thing to do. If you put the extra one on, it would probably get yeah. a lot more play. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hold that on. Yeah. Uh, need to get this in here. Oh, I gotta move my finger. Yeah, got it. Perfect. Right. And the thing is, I don't know. You, you teamwork uh, makes the dream work. <laughs> totally. Uh, the alignment here is going to be as, as you know. It's up to you, basically. But uh, and like you, 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 it's up to you how fussy you want to get in terms of getting the microphone aligned with the footage. I found that at least with the with the with the stage where I'm at with doing this kind of editing because I'm not that good yet. I mm. was able to sort of get it, you know, having it roughly correct was good enough. But it depends on how fussy you want to be with the alignment. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this then goes into the bottom of the camera for for the actual for supplying power. And then when you plug it in, the camera will actually turn on straight away. Oh, it's detap. I, I, what I do is I just use my phone here for doing the controls. Oh, it's great. Right, it yeah. has all. It tells you how yeah. many hours and That's minutes. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So what you do ISO. is, but to turn the Wi-Fi on and off, so just in case that it gets reset, what you yep. do is is that you hold the I button down, the yep. info button down, mm -hmm. and that will turn the Wi-Fi on and off. Easy. Right. So the default password on this is one two three four five six seven eight. Oh, I love it. We just connect with the camera. And then from here, we should get like a live preview of what's going on. Oh wow! Now, I see a little bit of mic there. That's right. So it's pretty. It's pretty wide. So you see what I mean about the feet, right? So you can see the foot just there, and you've got this just here. It doesn't. It doesn't have to stick out very far, what? but it's in is the shot. Is this just the Zcam app? This what? is just the Zcam app, right? So what you can do is that you can shoot at 60 frames per second, but it's lower resolution correspondingly. Mm. But um, you know you can go back down to 30 frames per second. What do you recommend? Do you recommend 60? Depends whether your subjects are moving or not. And the other thing that you want to check is is that you want to check for the ambient lighting because you might get strobing on the lights. So if so our subjects are moving, if they're moving fast, you're talking about frame rate, right? Why yeah. So yeah. So if, if, you if you're slow, mo slow motion, smoother motion. But but also I think like the frame rate. In a way, it makes the 3D seem a little bit more real. The Correct, things I've yeah. seen with that. So Correct. I'm going to shoot everything 60. I, that would be my recommendation. Okay. Just based on what I've the experience that I've had, if you're shooting outdoors, you might as well have the ISO low. If you know yeah. you're shooting here in California, 
um, you know, I crank the ISO down to like, you know, I actually fix the ISO. I don't like it moving around in the yeah. room. So I tend to put, I, you know, I tend to go as low as we can go. Wow, you but go down to a hundred, like I did like today. You can quite cheerfully operate it with that. Yeah. So once I got things set, like for example, like I did a bunch of shooting out in Bush when I was in Sydney, and once I got the camera to where I wanted in terms of exposure, I would not operate it from the app anymore. I just, I just run it. That's it, right? So we can see the camera here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Hey there. So how's it going? Can I shake your hand there? How are you doing? It's good to meet you. Good, thank you. Are you doing great today too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Like that. All right, so I'm going to show you guys my tattoo I got in Nam. This, uh, this thing right here, you know, I've had it for years. I need to touch it up. But it's really a metaphor for my life on schooling before my eyes. <laughs> um, I'm going to put my favorite movies in here eventually. It's going to be Titanic.